Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 10.6, Problem Solving, Customary and Metric Conversions. Our essential question is how can you use a strategy, make a table, to help you solve problems about customary and metric conversions? Let's go ahead and get started. If you look at this first question, it says, Thomas is making soup. His soup pot holds eight quarts of soup. How many one cup servings of soup will Thomas make? If you look right here, you can see that four cups equals one quart. So if he is having eight quarts, and we want to know how many cups, a table is a great way to show this. You can make a table by having one quart equals four cups, two quarts then would equal eight cups, three quarts would equal 12 cups, four quarts would equal 16 cups. And if you keep this pattern going, you can see that the pattern would be the number of quarts times four would give you the value of the cups. So if you plug in eight into your table, eight times four would equal 32 cups. We're gonna be using this strategy today to help us with various problems, so let's begin. Question two says, Paulina works out with a two and a half kilogram mass. What is the mass of the two and a half kilogram mass in grams? So we wanna know how many grams is two and a half kilograms mass. So we can solve this by using the strategy of making a table. So I'm gonna make a table like this, and I'm gonna put a K, G for kilogram, and then a G for gram. And let's make a horizontal line going right there. Now let's look at our table. We know that one kilogram equals 1,000 grams because 1,000 grams equals one kilogram. So if I were to have two kilograms, how many grams would that be? You'd have 2,000 grams. Now if I happen to have three kilograms, I would have 3,000. So let's stop and think. If I have two and a half kilograms, I would have the value of the number that goes directly right between two and three. It would be two and a half. So, what number comes directly between 2,000 and 3,000? It would be 2,500 grams. For question number three, it says Alex lives 500 yards from the park. How many inches does Alex live from the park? So the question is wanting to know how many inches are 500 yards. So we can make a table. Go ahead and do that with me on this question. And let's make a YD, that stands for a yard, and let's do an IN for inches. Now we know that 36 inches equals one yard. But if we wanted to do how many inches are in 100 yards, I would do 100 times 36. And when you multiply 100 times 36, you get 3,600. So I know in 100 yards, you're going to have 3,600 inches. We just proved that right down here because 36 inches are in one yard, 100 yards, times 36 inches would be 3,600 inches. So if 100 yards equals 3,600 inches, we can, can keep this pattern going. 200 yards would be 200 times 36, because remember, 36 inches is one yard. So we have 200 yards would equal how many inches? Let's go ahead and do this math. And as you add that up, your two different partial products, you'll have 7,200. All right, so let's keep our pattern going. If you have 300 yards, 400 yards, and 500 yards, you're going to multiply. Our pattern is going to be times 36 inches. We'll give you how many total inches would be in that many yards. So go ahead and work these out, pause the video, and let's see if we agree. All 
Okay, I went in ahead and showed the work just to show the table. 300 yards would equal 10,800. 400 yards would equal 14,400. And 500 yards would equal 18,000. All right, I hope your answers agreed with mine. All right, friends, let's take a look at number four. Number four says, Emma uses a 250 meter roll of crepe paper to make streamers. How many decameters of crepe paper does Emma use? Now, I've given you a little help here to tell you that 10 meters equals one decameter. So if 10 meters equals one decameter, and we want to know if she uses 250 meters, how many decameters would that be? We need to remember that meters are smaller than decameters. Whenever you go from a smaller measurement to a larger measurement, you're going to, to divide. All right, so we have 250 meters, and we have how many decameters? If you want to try this one all by yourself and work it out, go ahead and press pause now, so that way you can try to see if you can get it before I show you. Go ahead and press pause now if you want to try it all by yourself. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make a table because that's our strategy. And our strategy for making a table is I'm going to go ahead and put right here, um, let's do meters and decameters. I'm going to go ahead and make a line right there. You can do that along with me in your book if you haven't done it by yourself already. All right, now I have already shown you that 10 meters equals one decameter, so I'm going to start with that right there. 10 meters is to one decameter. Now, if I think about it, if I had 50 meters, how many decameters would that be? Well, it would be five, all right? Because decameters are 10 times greater than meters. So it's gonna be 10 times greater than meters. So whatever you multiply your decameter by, you're going to have that many meters, all right? Because decameters are 10 times greater than meters. All right, so now let's go to, I'm gonna see if I had 10 decameters well, 10 times 10 is 100, so it'd be 100 meters. So I'm kind of working backwards a little bit here. All right, so let's just keep this pattern going. If I had 15 decameters, that would be 150 meters. Okay, what if I had 20 decameters? That would be 200 meters, because 20 times 10 is 200. And let's do one more. If I had 25 decameters, how many meters would that be? It would be 250 meters. So we can actually stop right there because the question asks, if you use 250 meters, how many decameters would that be? So using my table strategy, I have 250 meters here, so that would be 25 decameters. Let's take a look at question five. It says a flatbed truck is loaded with 7,000 pounds of bricks. How many tons of bricks are on the truck? So we wanna know how many tons are 7,000 pounds. Well, let's remember back in our older charts that we've used this chapter, that one ton is equal to 2,000 pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and write one ton equals 2,000 pounds. Go ahead and do that with me on your chart. And we wanna know if we had 7,000 pounds, how many tons would that be? So let's go ahead and make our chart. If we had two tons, how many pounds would that be? Well, if one ton is 2,000 pounds, then two tons would have to be 2,000 times two, which that would come up to be 4,000 pounds. So we need to keep going because we don't have 7,000 yet. What if I had three tons? Okay. It would be 2,000 times 3 for that answer, which would give me 6,000 pounds. And let's do one more ton. Let's do 4 tons would equal 8,000 pounds because I know that 4 times 2,000 is 8,000. So if the truck is loaded with 7,000 pounds, I know 7,000 comes directly between 3 and 4. What number on a number line would come directly between three holes and four holes? It would have to be three and a half. 
So I could say that there are three and a half tons of bricks that equals 7,000. Three and a half tons equals 7,000 pounds. All right, here are your two questions that I want you to do for homework tonight. Look at number one carefully and number two carefully. If you need to look at your chart to help you with conversions, go ahead and do that. Also do questions three through six as well. And please don't forget to assess yourself about how you feel. If you feel like you're level one, please write that at the top of your page. Let's level two, apprentice, please write that. Three, practitioner or four, expert. And we will go over these answers tomorrow in class and we'll check them together and we'll do a lot more practice so you can really feel confident. All right, have a great night. Bye-bye.